I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will sing. I who made the stars at night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light? Shall I say, Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the Thank mm-hmm. you. 
And in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, Margaret, and all of us this evening. Today is the day that so many of us have waited long for, waited such, with such expectation for, none more so than yourself, Margaret. After all, the truth is you waited a hundred years for this day. <laughs> and so we're proud and privileged and glad and humbled to be with you and your family here and with your descendants, as I said to someone a few moments ago, as many as that of Abraham and Sarah. And not, these days do not happen very often in families, in communities, in a parish setting, and with such joy. You bring joy and you bring goodness and grace with you as you entered so beautifully into the church a few moments ago, Margaret. And we want to celebrate with you. We want to rejoice with you and to be happy for you on this great day. A hundred years is a long time. A lot of water flows beneath the bridges of life in that time. And so we're thankful to God for your endurance, for your great faith and your love of God, your commitment to family, your commitment to this community and to the people who in return love you. So we are to do our best as we pray with you, as we pray for you this evening in gratitude and in thanksgiving for the years that have been had and the time that is yet to come. And so we turn to God in our hearts now and as always we entrust ourselves, our needs, our lives to his care and to his providence. We ask him to hear that prayer now, to grant forgiveness and healing, to give peace and mercy that it abounds for all of us. O God, who always listen mercifully to your servants, we humbly beseech you as we give thanks for your kindness and for the great life of Margaret, that free from all harm, we may constantly serve you in gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. And we're seated now, and we prepare to listen to God's word today from the scripture. A reading from the first letter of St. John. God is love. My dear people, let us love one another, since love comes from God. And everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. <clears throat> Anyone who fails to love can never have known God, because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world his only son, so that we could have life through him. This is the love I mean. Not our love for God, but God's love for us when he sent his son to be the sacrifice that takes our sins away. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us, and his love will be complete in us. The word of the Lord. See a play. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ send your grace and peace. I never stop thanking God for all the graces you have received through Jesus Christ. I thank him that you have been enriched in so many ways, especially in your teachers and preachers. The witness to Christ has indeed been strong among you, so that you will not be without any of the gifts of the Spirit while you are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. And he will keep you steady and without blame until the last day, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because God, by calling you, has joined you to his Son, Jesus Christ. And God is faithful. This is the word of the Lord. Today, 50 years ago, one of the most momentous feats in human endeavor took place. You could say it was quite literally out of this world. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin set their foot and set sway on the moon, leaving the first human footprints in its dusty soil. They raised their flag and they talked to their president Nixon some 240,000 miles away back on Earth. And then the words that were immortalized, we remember them. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And so it was, and so it still remains in the human mind and the memory to this day. But some 50 years earlier, back on planet Earth, the news of the arrival of another human, a little girl, to Annie and Daniel Sweeney, held sway in the townland of Minas Rhone in Balanafinha. No fanfare, no global audience of millions, no world tour afterwards, no communication with the leader of the free world, but all the same, history was made and history was in the making. No word of astronauts or Apollo 11 back on the 20th of July, 1919. And after the little child came onto the earth, she was quickly baptized Margaret, and soon she began to take her own tentative steps, leaving her own human footprint in the landscape of Minas Rhone and beyond. And upon losing a parent at the early age of six. Margaret, you came to live with cousins at the gatehouse with Mary and Frank Quinn. And at 19 or so, you ventured into the big smoke of Glenty's town, beginning work in the factory. And you remained. And within the next decade, love struck in the person of Jimmy Roger, with your love signed and sealed before God in the Long Tower Church in Derry, in February of 49. And then you continue to make history, and here it is in the row beside you, with the emergence of all the family on the scene, and rearing that family, keeping a home, being a good neighbor, and being an ever familiar friend of God, encapsulated your time and your being. Daily mass and the daily rosary became staples of your life. And the decades marshaled on, and love as much as work and prayer and family and loss and gain in the scales of time ensued. And that time has brought us to today, to the 20th of July, 2019. Only two digits have altered to bring you from the 20th of July, 1919, but a hundred years have come and gone in the interval. Much has come and gone. The moon landings have come and gone. Even the one who uttered those immortal words 50 years ago, Neil Armstrong, he too has come and gone. But you, you Margaret Sweeney, Mairead McSivnia, Margaret Roger, you remain. And we rejoice with you. We rejoice for you before God today in thanksgiving for this day and for the last 
36,500 plus days of your living upon this earth and counting. And just as the one who found the healing power of Jesus in that short gospel passage this evening, so Margaret, may you continue to experience God's love just as you've done all these years in the good times and in the bad, in the joy and in the sad times alike. The second reading had a very pertinent sentence or so, I thought, in it. It makes mention of giving witness. And Margaret, you've been a great witness to living and breathing Christian faith through word and through deed. And may you continue to be so, as you have been for your family, for the people around you, for me, who have had the privilege of getting to know you in the last two and a half years. For so many people, you stand as a bright light, a beacon of hope, continuity with the past, and permanency for all of us who are younger than you, to remind us that we all have come to make our mark upon the earth, more so than upon the moon, but we all come to make a mark and God has a place for us all. He has a role for us. He has a job for all of us to do. You continue to do your job as you did in earlier days, as you do to this day. The role of Martha was big in your life for so many years. And now as the years go on, it's the role of Mary the one who gives herself over to prayer, all the more. We thank you for being a dynamo of prayer and faith and goodness in this community for so, so long, Margaret. May you continue to give witness to the faith. As you do today, so may you do tomorrow and for the many tomorrows that are yet to come. Neil Armstrong was right, but he didn't know the impact of a woman who was born in a small town land in a half Gaelic parish exactly 50 years ago in the far-flung reaches of an island in the Western Atlantic as Margaret Sweeney, Margaret Roger was born and as you celebrated 50 years on the day of his moon landings. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. He may have said it landing on the moon, but Margaret, in all honesty, those words can be yours this day because you have set your foot on new soil and you have led the way for your family and their family and their family after them. May you continue to do so. May God grant you the health, the perseverance and may he continue to allow you to pray your seven decades of the rosary each day for each of your family and may he continue to help you to have a smile on your face now and forevermore. Amen. So in giving thanks to God now, we come to our prayer of the faithful today. And I invite you now as family to come forward to the ambo and to lead us in those prayers. Prayers of that nature today are very personal and they come from the heart. And we ask God to hear them with an open heart himself as you make them sincerely to him today for and with your grandmother and your loved one. We pray for Granny's carers who have looked after her all these years. We are blessed with their kindness and love to Granny. Lord, hear us. We pray for all here present that God may give us peace in our hearts for today, hope in our hearts for tomorrow, and love in our hearts forever. Lord, hear us. We pray for Granda Jimmy and all our relations on the Roger and Sweeney side that are deceased that God may shower them with eternal love. Lord, hear us. Pray for the family, relatives, and friends of Granny who have been there to support her through the years. Bless them with God's love and peace always. 
We pray that God may grant them the happiness that they seek. Lord, hear us. Pray for the Holy Church and her leaders, Pope Francis, our Bishop Allen, Father Jared, and all religious, that by their words and witness they may continue to build God's kingdom of justice, peace, and unity. Lord, hear us. Thank God for giving Granny a long and healthy life to be able to enjoy her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, who are so precious for her. Lord, hear us. We pray for all the friends here present, young and old, married and single, that they be blessed with health and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord God, these are prayers today have been said with a sincere and an overwhelming heart. We ask you to hear them, to grant them, and to bless Margaret and us, your people, this day of joy. For we make our prayer in and through the name of your Son, Jesus our Saviour. Amen. Margaret, the Mass for you was always what mattered, and it was the core and the heart, the beating heart of your life. And it's only proper and good that we have the honour of you being here to share in this Eucharist with us. And we've heard God's word, and we go now to the table of his love on the altar, and we ready ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist. So at this juncture now, I'd like to kindly invite yourselves as family to bring those gifts now, the gifts of bread and water and wine for us from the Cretan's table today to the altar. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you, Margaret, and with all here this day. We offer to one another a sign of that peace.
as cash can take it in. Died on the cross, my burden gladly buried. He bled and died to take away my sin. And sings my soul. Loving and merciful God, we pray for the many needs of families, for abundant love, for forgiveness and reconciliation, for a living faith to face the challenges of each day. Jesus, you were born into a human family and became our brother. You know well what families need to nourish both children and parents in long-lasting bonds of love and respect. Help families of all shapes and sizes turn to you as their source of life. May your spirit encourage husbands and wives, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters. Give us all the eyes to appreciate one another and to be grateful for the gift of families. Amen. And just before we come to the end of our Mass, again to offer gratitude and thanks for all who have come to join the family and to be with Margaret today. And I'm very conscious too that a lot of people have called to the house, to the home on the main street in the past week or so. Um, when I made reference to the Apollo 11 astronauts when they came back to Earth, they had to travel around the world to meet people, but the world came to you, Margaret, in the last number of days. And I'm, Sister Valerie was in to visit you earlier in the week, and great, we had a chat earlier, great to see Sister Valerie here today, joined with Sister Magdalene. Um, both of you so welcome this day. And we have our last Concordia, Pat the Cope, with us today as well. And I'm reliably informed that there were two great dignitaries um, with you the other day. I popped in twice during the week. I'm glad that I wasn't there um, at, at the time. I believe that um, the DOD himself, <laughs> so special that his name can't be said in full, and Father Eddie both joined you earlier this week too. So it's nice that you're having plenty of visitors and that they're coming to wish you their prayers and their blessings and their best. Um, at this time. So all it does me is to do the same and to wish you health, joy, plenty of family around you and I know how much you appreciate the um, great grandchildren with you um, so much. It gives you a great lift and may that continue for a long many day to come and for all the family that are here and I know some who have made great sacrifices to be here to be with you long journeys were made to be here, very long journeys, and we're thankful for that. So you're a hundred years young today, and may the youth and the vigour continue in the days and the weeks and the years that have yet to come. And I wish you all the best, Margaret, and I'm happy and made joyful for knowing you for the two and a half years that have gone by, and hopefully for many, many years to come. So as they would say, ad multus annus, many more happy years. 
So we come to the end of our Mass and I just want to thank yourselves as family for um, organising the liturgy and for participating so greatly in it through proclaiming God's Word, offering the prayer of the faithful, bringing forth the gifts and offertory, offering the beautiful post-communion reflection and for Mary yourself for distributing the uh, bread of life today in communion. And I'd like to thank, as always, as always, Sarah and Mark for providing what is their usual fair of beautiful music. Thank you. <laughs> the moment will not be allowed to pass and will be always treasured in the days and months to come through James himself with the video and through John with um, the camera. And we thank God for that too even though some of us are quite shy of both. Um, so may you have a good evening as it continues now, Margaret, and um, may there be plenty of noise on the main street on both sides. <laughs> so the Lord be with you all this evening, and may Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our special Mass, Margaret, has ended. May we all go now in peace to love, and to serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God.
streets of London are far behind the thoughts of homeland are crowding my mind familiar places come into view I see my home now soon I'll see We'll talk to the old folk They're getting on Treat them to late nights Sing a few songs We'll talk of the neighbors And life in the town there's so much to tell them The days fly around This is my homeland The place I was born No matter where I go It's in my soul My feet may a thousand places But my heart will lead me back home To my dummy goal And then tomorrow We'll take a walk Down to St. Mary's To a sheltered spot We'll kneel and pray there For the ones who have gone And hope that they're proud of their wandering sun This is my homeland The place I was born in No matter where I go It's in my soul My feet may wander But my heart will lead me back home to my Donegal. This is my homeland, the place I was born. Yes, my heart will lead me back home to my Donegal. Hi, Margaret. How are you doing? This is Daniel O'Donnell here sending a message to congratulate you on your 100th birthday. I hope that you have a great celebration and just enjoy it all and lots of love to you. God bless. As I stand above the starboard bow and watch the ocean as I view each new horizon I grow further from my home 
I'm sailing on a foreign ship that's bound for Montreal, but I'll view the world and make my destination Donegal. I would make my way from Malin to Bondoran through Rafal or Port Salon down to Kelly Beggs by Chrysler and Dunlough. I'd wander round by Barnes Moor Gap on everyone I'd call. There beyond the blue stack mountains in the town of Donegal. Johnny Gall, I miss you, and I'll never understand why I left you for these foreign lands against my heart's command. Whatever fortune comes my way, whatever may be for. I would make my way from Malin to Bondoran through Rafal or Port Salon down to Kilibex by Chrysler and Dunlow. I'd wander round by Barnes Moor Gap on everyone I'd call there beyond the blue. Stack mountains in the town of Donegal. I know I'll make my final destination Donegal. Oh Lord, my God, when I. God 
streets of London are far behind the thoughts of homeland are crowding my mind familiar places come into view I see my home now Soon I'll see you We'll talk to the old folk They're getting on Treat them to late nights Sing a few songs We'll talk of the neighbors and life in the town. There's so much to tell them. The days fly around. This is my homeland, the place I was born. No. To my dummy goal. And then tomorrow we'll take a walk down to St. Mary. To a sheltered spot We'll kneel and pray there For the ones who have gone And hope that they're proud of Their wandering son This is my home the place I was born in. No matter where I go, it's in my soul. My feet may wander a thousand places, but my heart will lead me back home to my this is my homeland, the place I was born in, no matter where I go, it's in my soul, my feet may wander, Yes, my heart will lead me back home to my Sits there in the corner in that old easy chair Grandchildren all around her, not a worry or a care Mother's birthday is today, but she won't tell her age She just smiles and winks and says, I've turned another page As we sat there talking Conversation flowed, the memories came flooding back 
of days so long ago When she worked in the fields with them From morning on till dusk Raising a big family on hard work, love and trust Everybody's loved one Everybody's had one I hope that you'll have yours a long, long time She brought us all into this world A lady with a heart of gold Mother, sweet mother I remember well my younger days Working on the farm She always said hard labor Never done you any harm And she'd never go to sleep at night For sometimes we'd be late A dedicated mother Who didn't mind the wait Now a whole new generation Part of God's great plan has meant her name has changed And mother now is known as grand And as her young grandchildren Sing happy birthday dear Mother gives them all a hug And wipes away a tear Everybody's loved one Everybody's had one I hope that you a long, long time She brought us all into this world A lady with a heart of gold Mother, sweet mother of mine Yes, everybody's loved one Everybody's had one I hope that you'll have yours A long, long time Brought us all into this world A lady with a heart of gold Mother, sweet mother of mine Yes, everybody's loved one Everybody's had one I hope that you'll have yours A long, long time She brought us all into this world Lady with a heart of gold, mother, sweet mother of mine. That's my mother, sweet mother of mine. My mother, sweet mother of mine. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. That's not much of a clap, is it? What's that about? That's a little bit better. Reverend Father, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all here to Atlantis, the Highlands Hotel, fully refurbed, to celebrate a 100th birthday. I don't exactly know how many of you have been to a 100th birthday party, but I don't know anybody that I uh, have come across that's been to one. So it is a fantastic achievement to get to 100. And I think she's an amazing woman. <laughs> from moving from uh, Fentown way back when she was six years old and moved to Glenties, well, she moved to the gatehouse first, which was just outside Glenties, where the train crossed the track. And it moved on then to a good friend of mine, Michael McNeilis. He was in it afterwards. <laughs> but my mother's chore in the morning was just to open the gates to let the train through. And then in the evening time, when she came back from school, she would close them, or open and close. So that was a really little start to my mother. She then had to come to school to Glenties. My mother only spoke Gaelic. Irish language, but when she got to Glenties, they spoke a different type of Gaelic. <laughs> so she had to start all over again to pick it up. 
and she had a, a nun that helped her out and she got through it. So then when she was 19, if I'm right, she moved to Glenty's with Frank and Mam Quinn. They, they, they brought her up. Frank was pretty strict, but mother wasn't soft. He virtually told the hairdressers in Corby, mother had long hair and under no circumstances was his hair to be cut. But mother being mother, she got his back turned and got a haircut. <laughs> so that put him in bad humor, so there was nothing spoke for a few weeks. But I think that was her more or less stating her personality. So then mother went to work in McDevitt's factory in Glenty's making various garments. Socks. Well, Frank Roberts says socks. <laughs> but you've all heard of message in a bottle. Yeah. You know, castaways, message in a bottle. My mother took it a whole new level. Message in a sock. <laughs> she put a message into a sock and she got a reply <laughs> from a chap in Sligo wanting a date halfway in Bundorn. Mother took cold feet. <laughs> Sorry, I'm moving to England. <laughs> so then as time went on, my father got arrested. He um, had a friend and asked, do you know of any lady you could match, match me up, a nice girl? And of course, my mother got introduced and they came to be and they got married. Had seven kids went on to have grandchildren and great-grandchildren and fantastic. Now, growing up, my mother was a very strict woman. <laughs> very strict. Polished the shoes on a Saturday night for mass Sunday morning. Very, re very regimental, yes. But a great person. She kept us very under control. She had this little twig, we used to call it the Sally Rod. <laughs> because at that stage, at that stage, all the boys wore short trousers. I think I was in short trousers until I was 12. I don't know. <laughs> but any little sign of any misachievement or whatever, the Sally Log on the back, of the Sally Rod on the back of the leg, it was, it was sore. But... Besides that, she was a fantastic mother, and my fa father was a fantastic dad. They really were. And we all grew up, and we went our own ways. And as time goes on, we all get older, and I was told that my mum, my mum got old. But my mum's last sister, Teresa, was a really massive friend. They talked every day, twice a day. And when Auntie Theresa passed away, it was a big miss to my mum. But, like everything else, she got over it. And she, when you get older, you cannot manage on your own. So you have to have a team of helpers. And I'm just going to read out some of the names of these ladies who, you know, have helped my mum down through the years. So... We've got Kathleen, Patricia, Rose, Bernadette, Paula, Martina, and Orla, who have helped, and who? And Mar, oh, especially, yeah. No, Margaret's not around. Oh, Margaret, yeah. And then we had bus driver Dominic, who used to take my mum down the day centre. The day centre in Glenties is really geared up for elderly people, and they do a great job. And Dominic's been there for years, and he's a great personality, and he deals with upper age group people. Very nice and respectful. So thank you all. Thank you all for, for that. And where am I now? My speech is going astray here. <laughs> but not just that. Three brothers, four sisters. Men, not that great with chores and stuff. Women really rule the rest. So I've got four sisters that are absolutely amazing. Yeah. 
these sisters have dedicated their lives to looking after my mum. My mum gets five star treatment. It doesn't matter day or night, them girls are there. And I don't think, I think so much of them. They're fantastic. You know what I mean? You just, you couldn't dream or how a family could be so close. You know, they all do their bit and they help each other out. And I think that's fantastic in a family. And No, 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 no. It's, it's, that's got nothing to do with it. But, and when you look around, it basically says this woman was well known. You have all done a great job. You've all turned up. You've come from everywhere. Cousins, Glenties, it's everybody. You have been amazing. Invitations went out and nobody made excuses, you've all come, and it's fantastic, you know. And a lot of the things to do with the Roger family is, is how we were brought up, how my mum and dad drummed into us to be respectful and be nice people. And at the end of the day, it's come through for my mum, you know, and fantastic. And. I would like to thank the, the hotel for providing the meal. Johnny Boyle, you, you've been fantastic down through the years to my mum. Because sometimes you come over to the hotel and you ask for a dinner and they bring us straight over there. They've always done that, they've been fantastic. And thanks to all the staff and we've got music coming on. So I think I'll zip it now. <laughs> but thank you very much. I think Robert might want to say a few words. Uh, so I think I'll let you go with that. We're going to have music, so enjoy yourself. And uh, how about raising your glass for a toast for my mum? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Margaret, happy birthday to you. Hip 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 hooray. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you.